My faith is in the younger generation, the modern generation. Out of them will come my workers. They will work out the whole problem like lions. You have to grow from the inside out. None can teach you. None can make you spiritual. There is no other teacher but your own soul. All weakness, all bondage is imagination. Do not weaken. Stand up and be strong. That is all the religion I know. Never be weak. You must be strong. You have infinite strength within you. Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. The fundamental tool is mind, through which we grasp, analyze, understand, experience the universe within and without. It is a mindset which determines your attitude and your approach to life. The power of mind. The mind is a very powerful tool. In ancient India, the powers of the mind were scientifically studied and channelized. The study of mind and its cultivation were given great importance and was indispensable in any field. Unfortunately, its powers have been neglected and misused today. A positive and broad mind does wonders while a restless and uncontrolled mind brings havoc and ruins an individual. We must be aware of this powerful tool and make best use of it to enhance ourselves. Instinct, Reason, Intuition We are what our thoughts have made us. So take care of what you think. Words are secondary. Thoughts leave, they travel far. Swami Vivekananda has pointed out that pleasure is not the goal of mind, but knowledge. Life cycle in the world we live is extremely complex. Here, the animals have to be content with their own instincts. For them, the rule is survival of the fittest. But humans can rise above this instinctive layer to a higher level of reason with the help of the mind. Again, they possess the rare faculty of intuition. Swami Vivekananda points out that intuition is above reason and is supernatural. He has also given ample hints on ways to train the mind, ar arousing the unseen power of intuition which leads to seeker to the highest to truth. There has been a revolution in personality evolution. In ancient India, the emphasis was always on a complete personality and not mere professional efficiency. This experiment by our ancestors was successful. It could create a wonderful society flourishing in every field. With the blind imitation of the West, our outlook was shifted only on professional efficiency. Selfishness ruled in the mask of being clever and reasonable. The result of this new experiment has been disastrous not only in India but also in the West. As time passed, we have become victims of dissatisfaction and destruction. Harmony is absolutely necessary for our survival. A new outlook has to be developed and enforced in which the ancient virtues must mingle with the modern virtues. With the scientific spirit, one must become an integrated personality leading to improvement of society and individual joy. Human race today stand in front of another 
evolution, the holistic development of an individual. Students frame their thoughts, cultivate their habits by observing their peace, society around etc. Temptations urge for instantaneous success by hook or crook, making shortcuts to reach end goals, end goals, blind belief that all westernization is modernization etc. Man wants happiness and goes to any extent to get that. But one must be clear to himself whether one desires short-term illusionary gains or long-range happiness. Happiness must always be accompanied with control. In the photo, both negative and positive human development are illustrated. Negative or undesirable human development. A spoiled child becomes illiterate or ill-trained leading to unemployment and crime. A self-centered individual invites many problems like greed, corruption, broken family, environmental and global destruction and eventually to the annihilation of human race. Positive or desirable human development on the other hand focuses on values and empowerment of youth through education. An educated youth undertakes judicious economic enterprise leading to a divine family and ultimately cosmic harmony. Choice is ours. Your thoughts make good or bad, hell or heaven. All expansion is life. All contraction is death. The analysis and acceptance of positive or negative values is vital for an individual since it leads to life or destruction. One must take the responsibility of life. It is also essential to stick to positive values in spite of the fact that they do not appear to lead to pleasure and success in a very short time as the other path does. Positive values lead an individual in a concrete path, giving permanent solutions to problems, joy and peace. One must have the patience and perseverance to follow this path. It must also be remembered that negative values ultimately devastate the individual. Man investigates the unknown because of curiosity or fear. There are two ways to solve the mystery, through instinct or through reason. Instinct results in arrogance and violence. Uncontrolled reasoning also results in arrogance and limitless cruelty. The former refuses to learn out, out of ignorance while the latter refuses to learn because of arrogance. He thinks he knows everything already. In comparison, the damages through instinct are far behind the damages through the misuse of scientific tools. The gas chambers of Germany, atom bombs thrown on Hiroshima and Nagasaki are but a few examples of the horrible use of science. Man must not swing to extremes. Through the noble values of self-control, excellence, honesty, respect, responsibility and courteousness with a mentality ready to learn through experiences, he must rise to higher levels of consciousness. He must bring blessings to the society through a positive and constructive use of science and its tools. Enquiry and experiment, keys to character, fearless scientific minded Eng Naren, in search of the absolute truth, questions Sri Ramakrishna. Swami Vivekananda never believed anything without questioning and understanding it himself. He directly questioned Sri Ramakrishna, Sir, have you seen God? For many years, he closely watched the Master, never allowing himself to be 
influenced by blind faith. Always testing the words and actions of Sri Ramakrishna in the crucible of reason. The master too was overjoyed to find a disciple who doubted and he knew that Narain was the one to carry his message to the world. Once Sister Nivedita, his dedicated disciple, felt sorry because she was not able to follow him implicitly. Swamiji then replied, let none regret that they were difficult to convince. I fought my master for six years with the result that I know every inch of the way. Every inch of the way. He was perhaps the first prophet to put religion on a scientific platform when he said, Do not believe in a thing because you have read it about it in a book. Do not believe in a thing because another man has said it was true. Do not believe in words because they are hollowed by tradition. Find out the truth for yourself. Reason it out. That is realization. Scientific investigation and character formation. Scientific investigation requires a focused mind. Scientific investigation breaks barriers of high and low, gender, race, background, discrimination and so on. With this help build character. In fact, we should all cultivate a truly scientific attitude which makes for tolerance. Scientific temper blends modesty and humility with self-reliance and initiative. It is generally believed that questioning and investigating belong to a special intelligent group alone. But whether we accept it or not, we are all endowed with a scientific spirit. A child experiments the world around it. Man is a thinking animal. Instinctively he questions, we must try to cultivate a nurture and nurture positive scientific spirit in us. Vain argument, however, must be avoided. In fact, science is defined as knowledge. It is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. In an older and closely related meaning, science also refers to a body of knowledge itself, of the type that can be rationally explained and reliably applied. While science deals with the external universe, religion deals with the internal universe. Modern science and religion are not antagonistic. They are becoming complementary. It is an interesting subject of discussion. Dirty pond water turns to pure river, water, river under solar energy. Similarly, our character must be converted from lower to higher with science. Girish Chandra Ghosh was transformed from sinner to a saint. Advaita declares unity. According to this philosophy, the supreme principle, termed Brahman, pervades the entire universe covering all objects, animate and inanimate. The difference is only in the manifestation. Ignorance obstructs the knowledge of this Brahman which is inherent in all. With the dawn of knowledge, the truth is unveiled. Thus, there is no concept of sin in Advaita. Cultivation of noble virtues and self-awareness transforms an individual. Girish Chandra Ghosh, a drunkard and a bohemian, was accepted and loved by Sri Ramakrishna. He saw a Bhairava, a manifestation of Shiva in him. This faith and unconditional love moved Girish. Later, he became a saintly character. The idiom, Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future is literally true in Advaita. Understanding and control of mind is pivotal for character building. The instinctive mind is a sacred gift 
and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Albert Einstein says this. Eminent scientists like Albert Einstein have emphasized the importance and utility of the intuitive mind. From instinct man must rise to this from instinct man must rise to this intuitive level. Sister Niveta went to meet Sri Sharada Devi, the divine concept of Sri Ramakrishna. A pioneer in education, Nivedita was endowed with keen intelligence and analyzing outlook. On her very first meeting, it surprised her. The Holy Mother greeted her affectionately as her daughter in spite of her western background. With her intuitive mind, Nivedita could recognize the greatness of the personality before her. Swami Vivekananda had taught her never reject reason for the intuitive truth also accepts it first only to transcend it in course of further quest. After years of association, Nivedita wrote about the Holy Mother. She really is under the simplest most unassuming guise, one of the strongest and greatest of women. Her intuition in the first meeting proved correct. Her lasting relationship with the mother has resulted in a wonderful harmony between the two different sides, the traditional and the scientific. Thoughts have self-organization to make or to mar. Even inanimate things synchronize with each other. What to speak of animate world? No wonder our company matters. Man is a social animal. He tends to mingle with others and imitate them. It is curious that pendulum swing at different times, swing together in harmony after some Sometime. It has been proved scientifically that the raw molecules having irregular molecular orientation interact through chemical reaction and slowly switch to regularly arranged patterns. It is surprising how even inanimate objects tend to move together. The same pattern is applied to humans also. Whatever be the case, humans tend to stay and behave in the same pattern. Therefore, one must be careful in choosing company. It is a vital factor for one's progress. Nothing, neither money pays, nor name, nor fame, nor learning. It is character that can cleave through adamantine walls of difficulties. There is no, there is no limit to the power of human mind. The more concentrated it is, the more power is brought to bear on one point. That is the secret. Herein is the difference between man and the animals. Man has the greater power of concentration. The difference in their power of concentration also constitutes the difference between man and man. Compare the lowest with the highest man, the difference is in the degree of concentration. This is the only difference. Concentration is the essence of all knowledge. Nothing can be done without it. 90% of thought force is wasted by the ordinary human being and therefore he is constantly committing blunders. The trained man or mind never makes a mistake. The mind has to be gradually and systematically brought under control. The will has to be strengthened by slow, continuous and persevering drill. This is no child's play, no fact to be tried one day and discarded the next. It is a life's work and the end to be attained is well worth all that is it can cost us to reach it. Being nothing less than the realization of our absolute oneness with the divine. Surely with this end in view and with the knowledge that we can certainly succeed no price can be too great to pay. Swami Vivekananda on youth power. It is the young, the strong and healthy of sharp intellect that will reach the God. 
say the Vedas. This is the time to decide your future while you possess the energy of youth, not when you are worn out and jaded, but in the freshness and vigor of youth. Work. This is the time for the freshest, the untouched and unsmelt flowers alone are to be laid at the feet of the Lord and such he receives. Rouse yourselves, therefore our life is short. There are greater works to be done than aspiring to become lawyers and picking quarrels and such things. A far greater work is the sacrifice of yourselves for the benefit of your race, for the welfare of humanity. Young men, my hope is in you. Will you respond to the call of your nation? Each one of you has a glorious future if you dare believe me. Have tremendous faith in yourselves, like the faith I had when I was a child and which I am working out now. Have that faith, each one of you, in yourself. That eternal power is lodged in every soul and you will revive the whole of the country.